guest today, Ronda Rousey, our friend, UFC champion. What's up, Rowdy? What's up, Jay? How you doing? Uh, not too good. A little pissed Why? off today. Well, I'm driving to work, and I hear you on the Dan Patrick Show, and I feel like you're cheating on me with another radio host. I'll be honest with you. That hurt my feelings a little bit. Oh, come on. You know I'm a slave to all the media stuff. You think I wanted to wake up that early and talk to anybody? I, if it's, you're going to wake up that early. I'm actually excited to talk to. All right, good. If you're going to wake up that early to talk to somebody, call Maddie Boy. He's, he's, he, you know, he's dying. He wants to marry you for crying out loud. Hey, Maddie. Uh, Pat, uh, Pat, uh, sorry, Dan Patrick, I don't think he's, uh, watched many fights, but he did a good job. So now it's my job to ask you questions that aren't the corporate ones that Dan Patrick asked. You with me? Good. I, I'm tired of giving out stock answers. How many diamond push-ups can you do? Ooh, I don't know. I've never really counted. Do you want if me you, to put the phone down? And right now, down? you him right now. Do our our producer, who's like a scrawny guy. It's very weird, Rhonda. Our producer, Greg Hong Kong Tui. He looks like a nerd. He looks like one of the prawns from Muppets Take Manhattan. He looks like something out of Fraggle Rock. But for some reason, this guy can bang out forty-two diamond push-ups. Can you do forty-three diamond push-ups? Um, you know what? You might have to ask me after this call if you want to be efficient. Uh, with our time, but Fraggle right. Rock, that's an awesome reference, man. <laughs> Down at Fraggle Rock. All right, after we hang up, you bang them out, and you, uh, you text me how many you got done. But you got to beat 42. All right. Man, I'm all dressed up. I'm going to get all sweaty. All right. I'll Why are you all dressed you. up? For radio? What? Why are you all dressed up? Because they're going to make me do, like, a satellite radio tour later. So, I mean, I'm doing, like, all phone now, and then I have to do, like, video later. All right, you can't say Wonder Woman. If you could be any superhero, which one would you be? If I could be any superhero? Yeah, but you can't say Wonder Woman. Um, I would be Jean Grey, the X-Men, as Phoenix. All right, that's cool. What's your favorite fast food, Ronda Rousey? Um, I don't really eat fast food, but... Oh, come In -N -Out. on. In-N-Out? That's good. Yeah. What was the first thing you stuffed your face on? The moment you walked out of the octagon when you armbarred Liz Carmouche. I had like 50 buffalo wings. Buffalo <laughs> wings. Hey, how were you aware yeah, yeah. of the fact that there was 11 seconds left when you armbarred that chick? Because I was at home on my couch. My Twitter timeline exploded because America thought, and all the more stories, podcast listeners, they thought that was going through a second round. That was scary for a minute, Rhonda. Did you think it was going to second round? Did you know how much time was um, left? I was a little concerned about the time towards the end, but uh, I couldn't stop what I was doing because I was worried about the time. But I'm sure your timeline was blowing up because everyone's like, Rhonda's going to be thinking about you in the stool. <laughs> you jinxed her, JJ. You jinxed her. Uh, <laughs> at any time when you're fighting Liz Carmouche, did you think she was Uriah Faber? <laughs> well, she tried the same exact submission that he did earlier that night. Isn't that crazy? And they had the same um, braids. Yeah, but the good thing is when I watched that submission happen from the back, I, w w I registered all the things that Menjivar did wrong. And one of those things was he leaned up against the cage, and he was trying to work on the arms. And if you lean up against the cage, you're holding the person on your back. Right. And in that position, you should be trying to untangle the person's feet, you know, not their arms. Um but, I mean, Uriah had a full body triangle, but Liz didn't. So um, after watching that, I, I catch it in mind, like, okay, walk away from the cage, stand in the middle, keep on balance, get rid of her feet first. And it was actually very convenient that it happened that way. I thought your head was going to pop off. I got very nervous. Liz Carmouche, all respect in the world to former U.S. Marine Corps and uh, veteran, Liz Carmouche, she gets you in a choke from behind. She's on your back. It's like when Bugs Bunny wrapped himself around the guy's head in the wrestling on the Bugs Bunny cartoons. But she didn't have a choke really around your Adam's apple. It was around like your mouth and nose, and she just started cranking your neck. At any point, did you think to yourself, is my neck going to break? Okay, A, I don't have an Adam's apple, so you better retract that. And B, yeah, it was a neck crank. It wasn't a, uh, a choke. And, yes, it was extremely painful, but uh, I know how unlikely it is that someone's actually going to get their neck snapped and, you know, fall dead Kumite style. It's not really that likely to happen at all. So um, I was just trying to be aware of the situation and make, like, right decisions on how to get out of it because I wasn't too worried. It was, you know, I was in very much pain, and I'm sure a lot of people would have given up at that point. But I know I wasn't in danger of 
going unconscious or getting paralyzed or anything like that. It's just, it's a pain move and pain something that I could deal with. Uh, you probably, if I know you as well as I think I know you, you probably are a little disappointed that you even are in the move to begin with. Yeah, yeah, I am. But it, it really did work out for the best because it put a lot more drama in the fight and it wouldn't have been so great if I looked so overly dominant for, you know, because we want people to be excited about the matches and, um, it, it's good that I look a little bit vulnerable from time to time, so there's a little bit of mystery in the fights. It's not just a foregone conclusion every time I fight. And I would much rather learn from my wins than from my losses. So yeah. that actually exposed some parts of my game that I need to work on and made me realize that um, during the whole camp, we used the walls for wrestling, for takedowns, but um, whenever we were grappling, we did it in an open mat because we're not allowed to grapple at the at SK, the place that we do wrestling. So we're putting up a cage wall in our gym so I can start doing some grappling against the walls. And I wouldn't have realized that I had that that um, that we missed that during camp if that didn't happen. Uh, I'm this is gonna sound like I'm making a joke, but I'm not. It's a serious question. When you tossed Liz Carmouche and she went down on the ground, she did an up kick and it hit you square in the boob. Now I don't know this, and I'm being completely serious. Does it hurt to get kicked in the boob? Is it like a guy getting hit in the nuts? Does it hurt like that? <laughs> um, well, when you're first developing, you're first like growing your tatas, um, it's very, very sensitive. So like for but, Maddie Boy, it would hurt you know, his boobs because he's going through puberty where, right now. Where are they going to be? And uh, it's funny, she wouldn't have kicked me at all if I hadn't been so worried about my bra coming off during the whole time that she was like doing the neck crack thing. So the second I got her off, I like bent over to try and pull my bra up, and she kicked me right there. So yeah. then I had to take a step back, readjust the bra, and then go back in again. It was a weird outfit, i got to be honest with you, because in your prior match, the Misha Tate match, you had almost like Brazilian beach volleyball shorts on and a bigger top. In this fight, you sort of went with like the long, almost NBA-length shorts and a super tiny top. When are you going to find the outfit you're comfortable in? Why not just go in the ring with a full wetsuit? I did find outfit I was comfortable in the Kaufman fight, the one right before this. And I told the play on my team, I was like, get me that exact outfit. Yeah, we and all liked it too, instead Rhonda. Instead of doing that, they got me the same shorts, but they got me, um, I have that same top for weigh-ins. That's my weigh-in top. And then they got me two weigh-ins tops. They didn't give me a weigh-in top and a fight top. And so I was like, all right, I'll just put a second bra underneath and see if that works. And I didn't. And so I'm just... And they always wait to the last minute to give me my clothes. Like, they give it to me, like, the two days before when there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm just going to have to go and do everything myself from now on if I'm going to try and avoid just revealing myself to everybody during a fight because it's so distracting, and I'm still pissed off about it. How much would it cost me to have you walk into the ring in your next fight wearing a More Stories t-shirt that says Morrier on it? <laughs> How much is that? Like for um, for you to have like a sponsor like I, I, shirt? I don't. I can't sell corner passes. It doesn't really work like that. No, I mean, but there's I'm a sponsor sure each fight. Dana, he'll he'll give you a good seat, and you can. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I mean, literally, like if I was the shirt, you know, guys walk in with Affliction shirts, and guys walk in with like Golden Palace Casino dot com shirts. If you walked in, the shirt in your entrance is a More Story shirt and says Morrier on it. The shirts that I from my podcast. How much would that go? What? How much does it cost? To actually be a sponsor of you, you walking into the ring wearing a product shirt. Um, I don't know, but you would have to actually pay the UFC as well because you have to like pay them for the right to like sponsor athletes for like the year. Are you open to it? Are you open to the idea? Pay them first, and then you have to pay me. Are so you all right? Are you expensive. open to the idea if I can figure out the cash? If you can figure it out the cash, then go for it. All right. Nick Diaz uh, fighting uh, GSP. Rhonda, I've never been more excited for a fight in my life than I am for this fight. GSP, for some reason, no matter who he fights, no matter who he beats, no matter how impressive he is, it seems like every other fighter I've ever spoken to, they just kind of... Don't give him credit. They don't, Matt Hughes even said, hey, I wouldn't want him in a street fight. I would. I don't understand it. I think this is maybe the best UFC matchup I've seen in my lifetime. Who do you think wins this fight? Well, I always got to back my boy, Nick. I, I always have to. But, um, yeah, like, it's. It, I think this fight's going to be different for, I mean, I hope it's going to be different because, uh, I know that GSP is really a lot more fired up for this one. Has taken the things a lot more personally, and he's approached it a lot differently. And we've I, never I seen really GSP, he yeah. To his much more dynamic. Style we've never of seen fighting. him pissed off at somebody. This is the first time we've seen GSP pissed off at an opponent. Yeah, and I really hope that brings out the, you know, the dynamic fighter in him. And we always know that Nick always brings that. But right. 
Um, yeah, I really hope that we don't see some repetitive takedown lane prey fight. Oh, well, I don't but, think that's um, going to be the case in this one, know. no. But I really hope that they really come out to give us a show. I know that Nick always does, and I hope that GSP does as well and isn't just trying to get the win. All right, so you got to beat 42 diamond push-ups. You don't have to get all sweaty. Take your time with them. Get good form on those and text me how many you get. See if you can beat my producer. If you can't beat a radio producer, what kind of champion are you, Ronda Rousey? Oh, come on. Yeah, see, you know how to get in my head. You know I'm going to do it now. You better do it. If you don't, <laughs> you know, then the terrorists win. <laughs> Ronda Rousey, St. Pierre versus Diaz, UFC 158 in Montreal. Thank you, my love. We'll talk real soon, okay? Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye, Rhonda. She was joining us on the Progressive Insurance Celebrity Hotline. Up next, my friends, we got a Twitter hat trick coming up.